In this, the last module for lecture 4, we'll introduce higher order derivatives. In other words, functions that result from differentiating more than one time. We'll focus on second order derivatives. At the end of the module, there's a summary of the various rules of differentiation. Finding a second derivative is quite simple. Given the first derivative of a function, we just differentiate one more time. A necessary condition is that the first derivative is differentiable. That being so, we apply the differentiations to f prime x. These are two of the most common ways of writing a second derivative. And now let's look at an example of finding a second derivative of a function. We have f of x is equal to 2 times x to the fifth minus 3 times x cubed plus 2x. f prime x will equal, well, 2 by 5, 10 times x to the fourth minus 3 by 3, 9 times x squared plus 2. We simply differentiate the first root of so f prime prime x will equal d squared y dx squared is equal to 40x cubed minus 18x. The first derivative tells us how a function changes as the independent variable x varies. The second derivative tells us how the first derivative changes with x. As we'll see in coming lectures, this can be very useful. But before proceeding, uh, let's consider a classic example of the relationship between a function and its first and second derivatives. We have an object whose position is given by the variable x, and x is a function of time, so x equals x of t. We'll look at three cases. The first case, where xt is equal to some constant. Looking at the graph of that, we'll have a horizontal line with an intercept a. The first root of x prime t is equal to 0. The line's horizontal, so the slope is 0. x prime prime t, the second root of, of course, is also equal to 0. Our second case in our second case, we have an object moving at constant velocity. So we have x t is equal to a plus b t. So x is a function of time. The graph will have our intercept a there. And the slope is equal to b. The first root of x prime t is equal to well, b. So we have a constant slope. The velocity of the object doesn't depend on time. The second derivative, so differentiating x prime t, will equal 0. So we see that x prime t, the first derivative, isn't changing. We have a constant slope. The third case is where we have an object that's accelerating. So x of t might equal something like ct squared plus bt plus a. We'll only consider the case where t is greater than or equal to 0. We can graph that. We'll have the right-hand side of a quadratic function with an intercept of a. The first root of x prime t is equal to 2ct plus b. So the slope is a function of time. We see the slope changes depending on t. The second root of is equal to 2c. So the second derivative is constant. It tells us that the first derivative changes at a constant rate, 2c. The second derivative tells us more than just how the first derivative is changing. We can use it to find important information about the function itself. In this module, we'll look at the concept of concavity and vexity. In the next lecture, we'll also see how the second derivative gives us information about maximum points and minimum points on functions. So let's look at convexity and concavity. The function on the left is convex. A convex function is more or less bowl-shaped over an interval. We'll consider a more formal definition in a moment. On the other hand, on the right we have a concave function. A concave function is like an inverted bowl. You might think of it as forming a, a cave. 
Let's look at how the first derivative is changing for each of these functions. For the convex function, we start on the left where the slope is negative. At the minimum point, the slope is zero, and then the slope becomes positive. At some point here, we might have a slope of minus one, that is zero, and on the side, it will be plus one somewhere. So we go from minus one to zero to plus one, that means the change in the first derivative is positive. Our second derivative then is positive. So that's a characteristic of convex functions. We have a positive second derivative over the interval. On the other hand, with concave functions, on the left of the function, we start with a positive slope. At the maximum, we have a slope of zero and then a negative slope again. We could think of here we could have a slope of plus one somewhere and over here minus one. So we go from plus one to zero to minus one. The change in the first derivative is negative. So the second derivative is negative. That's a characteristic of concave functions. The second derivative is negative. In this slide we see the relationship between convexity, concavity and the second derivatives. We could also write that as follows, f of x convex on some interval i, if and only if the second derivative f double prime x is greater than or equal to zero on i. And similarly for a concave function, f of x is concave on i, if and only if the second derivative is less than or equal to zero on i. We also have some formal definitions of convexity and concavity here. Let's see how those work. So we have our formal definition of a convex function here. On the left side of the inequality we have f of x1 plus x2 on 2 is less than on the right hand side f of x1 plus f of x2 on 2. Let's go through that and see what it means. We have a convex function of x1 and x2 greater than x1. They're in some interval i. We have f of x1 and f of x2. Now if we take the average of x1 and x2, so x1 plus x2 on 2, Go up to the function across, then we have f of x1 plus x2 on 2. So it's the value of the function when x equals the average of x1 and x2. That's the left hand side of the inequality. Our next step is to join these two points on our function with a secant. Now if we go back to f of x1 plus x2 and go up vertically and across, that's where we get f of x1 plus f of x2 on 2. x1 plus x2 on 2 is the midpoint between x1 and x2. If you used a bit of simple geometry, we could see that f of x1 plus f of x2 on 2 is the midpoint between f of x1 and f of x2. So what our inequality is telling us is that if f of x1 plus x2 on 2 is less than the midpoint between f of x1 and f of x2, then we have a convex function. Of course that's going to occur when our function lies below a secant joining two points such as x1 and x2. If we had a concave function and go up and across, then we would see f of x1 plus x2 on 2 would be above the midpoint for f of x1 and f of x2. Our function lies above that straight line joining x1 and x2. This is just another way of writing the fact that if our function lies below a line joining two points, then it's convex. If the function lies above that line joining two points, it's concave. Going back to our convex function, looking at the first root of, we see the slope increases as x increases, and so the second derivative is positive.
We've talked about increasing and decreasing functions in the context of first derivatives and concave and convex functions in the context of second derivatives. We'll now bring those ideas together. A function can be convex on an interval and be increasing or decreasing. Similarly, it can be concave on an interval and increasing or decreasing. Let's look at those combinations. First, an increasing convex function. Second, a decreasing convex function. So both of these functions are convex. Now, an increasing concave function. Concave but increasing. And a decreasing concave function. Let's now examine the convexity or concavity of two functions. First, a familiar quadratic function, then a simple production function. Our function f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 2. We can see what the function looks like from the graph, but it's not always possible to graph a function. We can use our first and second derivatives to analyze the shape of the function. The first derivative, f prime x, is equal to 2x minus 2. The second derivative, f prime prime x is equal to 2. We can draw a simple sign diagram to see where our function is increasing and decreasing. First we'll left f prime x equals 0. That implies 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. Oh, x is equal to 1. Where f prime x is equal to 0, we have our minimum point there at uh, x equals 1. We draw a little dot line diagram. For values of x less than 1, the first derivative is negative. For values of x greater than 1, the first derivative is positive. For less than 1, f of x is decreasing. And for greater than 1, f of x is increasing. So let's summarise what we found. f of x is decreasing. In the interval minus infinity to 1. And f of x is increasing in the half-close interval. 1 to positive infinity. The second derivative is always positive. That implies our function f of x is convex from minus infinity to plus infinity. In this example we have a simple production function. k is the amount of capital used in the production process, y is the output. Uppercase a and lowercase a are constants. We have no labour in this production function. Perhaps it's some time in the future when robots do all the work and all the humans are on the beach enjoying themselves. We'll have particular values. K, the amount of capital, of course, is going to be greater than or equal to zero. And both A's are greater than zero. While the exponent little a is positive, it can either be between zero and one or greater than one. Let's look at those two cases. First, where little a is between 0 and 1. We'll take the first derivative, y prime is equal to a times little a times k to the a minus 1. And the second derivative is equal to uppercase a, lowercase a, and then a minus 1 times k to the a minus 2. Let's look at these particular values. So uppercase a is positive, lowercase a is positive. If little a is between 0 and 1, uh, this will be a negative coefficient, but still k to the a minus 1 will be positive. So it implies y prime is greater than or equal to 0 is positive. We have an increasing function. In the case of the second derivative, uppercase a is positive, lowercase a is positive, a minus 1. Now that's going to be negative and then still k to the a minus 2 will be positive. That implies that the second derivative 
is negative and we have a concave function. Given that the first derivative is greater than zero and the second derivative is less than zero, we have an increasing and concave function. We can draw a rough graph. K on the horizontal axis, Y on the vertical axis. Our intercept is zero. It's increasing and concave to a production function with A between zero and one. It looks something like that. For a greater than 1, we will have uh, y prime, first derivative, is equal to a little a k to the a minus 1. a is positive, little a is positive, k to the a minus 1 is positive. So it implies that y hat is greater than 0. Our second derivative is equal to a little a, a minus 1 k to the a minus 2, positive, positive. This time a minus 1 is positive since a is greater than 1, positive. So all four terms are positive and our second derivative is greater than 0. Our function is increasing and convex. To draw that, Just increasing and convex, the y-intercept is zero, something like that. Finally, what happens when a is equal to one? We'll have y equals a to the k to the one, equal to a to the k, y prime is equal to a, second derivative is equal to zero, of course we have a straight line. The last two slides in this module summarise the rules of differentiation that you should be familiar with. Most will appear on the formula sheet for the exams.